In today's Leeds news, Daichi Kamada linked with move to Leeds. Leeds monitoring 20-year-old Royal Antwerp defensive midfielder. Julian Quinoas linked with summer move for Leeds. Willy Nyonto transfer claim made. Premier League clubs set to vote on voluntary gambling ban. An update on Max Vober injury timescale. Hey folks, Jay here on Thursday morning, the 13th of April. I hope you're all having a really, really good week. Uh, we're going to crack into this. There's finally a bit of news floating around, so let's not hang around. Let's get into this. So we'll start off with news that Leeds' long-term long -term target, Daichi Kamada, has decided not to extend his contract at Eintracht Frankfurt and will be available to leave the club on a free transfer at the end of this season. Kamada was a player Leeds looked at this time last year, decided not to make a move for him in the summer. They then looked again in January, and with everything that happened, they decided to make a move for McKenney instead of Kamada. Kamada would add a lot of goals for midfield, especially in the last couple of years that he spent at Frankfurt. He has 37 goals and 31 assists in 170 games. He scored five goals last season as they went on to win the Europa League. And this season, he has scored 13 goals and has three Champions League goals to his name as well. An attacking midfielder that would give Leeds an awful lot of more, a lot more dynamism and a lot more attacking flair from midfield there are other clubs keeping an eye on him as well but the 26 year old is a good age would cost nothing bar his signing on fee so and um, a player i like i've liked him for a long time i think he's a really really good player and he's definitely one that would make a huge impact in terms of goals for leads in terms of creating goals and scoring and we've lacked them from midfield since click has left and since pablo before them so it'd be nice to get a player back in that wouldn't cost the world but again It'll all depend on where we are next season. So everything I'm going to say about players is 100% dependent on where Leeds are next season. So take all of that with a pinch of salt, okay? Um, moving on then, let's have a quick chat about uh, a, a rumour that I, I don't think there's a huge amount of credibility to, I've been honest with you, I don't think this is this is legit and Leeds are looking at this player. But what has come out from um Belgian outlet, I have to look at this, um, Het Newsvald. I probably got that really badly wrong. Um, what they have said is Leeds are amongst a couple of clubs who are interested in Mandela Keita, the defensive midfielder from Royal Antwerp. He's actually on loan at Royal Antwerp at the moment and is having a pretty decent time of it and has attracted a lot of interest from clubs in Europe. Uh, the midfielder is a Belgian under 21 international as well. And Leeds, Norwich and Blackburn are all said to be keeping an eye on the player and monitoring the situation there as well. Um, Antwerp have a 10 million option to buy at the end of the season with the loan move and it might be a little bit trickier to get him than... Um, you know any other player who's not already on loan or has an existing contract or a, an existing transfer uh, agreement in place but um another defensive midfielder another young defensive midfielder that leads to keeping an eye on you get the impression that leads are looking to stockpile defensive midfielders because they could be worth a bit of money in the future uh, not unlike center backs we saw that happen with diego urente leads extending his contract because they believe center backs are you know a rare commodity at the moment and are worth a lot more money because of that so uh, that is that next transfer one let's get on and talk about well the more exciting one and this one has come from south american outlet soya football and what they have said is leeds are amongst three clubs looking at colombian striker julian quinoas uh quinoas a 26 year old has got 16 goals and 32 appearances this season italian sides torino and sampdoria are also said to be keeping an eye on the player very excited player he is described as an exciting player with bags of talent and can play in several positions. He is considered an out-and-out -out number nine, but has capability to play on either flank. And if Leeds do go with more narrow wingers or inverted wingers attacking like they have done um, against Nottingham Forest, maybe he fits the bill. But it's another player that Leeds are bringing in that has multiple positions to his arsenal rather than just the, set, the standard number nine that Leeds probably are screaming for. But um, a player who has got goals in his, in his locker and is a good age again, 26 years of age. So another solid, probably on the upper end of what Leeds normally go for. But... Bit more experience what leads need if, if you're, to, if you're asking me that's what i think anyway and um, that's that one at the window gone moving on let's talk about the sponsorship white paper and this comes to a head today and a decision looks set to be reached between premier league clubs uh, today and the government on a gambling a voluntary gambling ban on front of short sponsors now the caveat here is if the clubs agree to this it would ban uh, gambling companies being positioned on the front of the shirt and only the front of the shirt. That means the sleeve sponsorship are still available for gambling companies to bid on as well. Leeds currently sponsored by SB SBO Top, who are a Philippines-based company, and they've given Leeds about six million pounds per year, which is the largest sponsorship deal that Leeds have had in the club's history. A vote from Premier League clubs today will take place, and a decision we made to take a voluntary ban 
This means gambling companies can only appear on the short sleeve, not the front. Gambling companies in general give Premier League clubs in and between five and fifteen million pounds per year, depending on the club and depending on the deal. So it's quite lucrative. And what we'll see here is where Premier League's moral compass lies. Gambling companies offer a huge amount of money, and as we all know, the Premier League is where all the money is. Will they take a decision to remove them from the front of the shirts, lose some of that revenue? It'll be tough for anybody else to step in and fill that void and that amount of money. But you know, will we see it happen? Or will we see Premier League clubs moral compass go the way that it has with uh, the buyouts and, and the lack of um, banning state ownership of club football clubs? So, remains to be seen. I know some people don't have a moral compass and some people don't really care, but I do. And gambling is a huge problem for a lot of people, you know, and um, glorifying gambling doesn't help people at all. So, in my personal opinion, if you're into it, that's okay. That's your that's your thing. You're okay. Just my own personal opinion. Um, so, it'll be interesting to see what happens later on today, but the vote is said to take place today. Cool. Uh, let's move on to the last few pieces and we'll talk about Max Vober first. Max, who picked up an injury while on international duty, a hamstring injury, um, was said at the time to be a small problem, but I've seen a miss Leeds last three games. And in those three games, Leeds have conceded 10 goals and look increasingly shaky at the back without with his absence there. Um, as I said, the injury was described as a small problem at the time and hasn't required surgery like Tyler Adams' injury. So from that perspective, it's probably really good. But however, he has missed those games and has cost leads, especially against Crystal Palace, where he looked really, really shaky at the back. Um, he is now described as being expected back in the next couple of days. We might see him back for the next two games. Probably not Liverpool. Looks like he might miss the Liverpool game, but could be back in time. Um, for the Leicester and Bournemouth games, which are huge for Leeds and will be probably the games that decide Leeds' position in the Premier League or Championship next season. So um, he's nearly there. Fingers crossed that he gets a bit of a boost and it gets back earlier because he's needed. The danger will be if Leeds rush him back and he gets an aggravation of the injury, you could put him out for longer. So they've got to manage this one really, really carefully. He's too big a player and too important for Leeds right now to you know, be rushed back into the team, miss the remainder of the season because of an aggravating of an injury that wasn't fully healed so it's a lot of a lot of risk attached to this one and it's one that will divide opinion upon, upon fa amongst fans and pundits because he's such an important player you want him back in the team you need him back in the team but you're gambling early on so they have to just wait and see and we'll um, get more information i'm sure in the next couple of days and then we'll get to have his press conference in the back end or he thinks tomorrow have his press conferences from monday and um Chances are he won't tell us anything about it anyway. So, But if he says he's not in good condition, we know he's starting against Liverpool. So that's what we can get from that. Uh, moving on to the final story of today. And again, just to caveat this and, and frame the entire discussion, this is all ifs, buts, and maybes. This is not guaranteed, and it's all up in the air. So, um, And also, this comes from Football Insider, so find the biggest bag of, sa of salt you can find and just, just throw it all over this new story because they are claiming that Leeds could back a £36 million sale for Willy Nanto if they're relegated. Now they've, again, two different sides to this. So the first side is, um, there is a high level of interest in Nanto from Italian clubs, and there will be interest. Juventus have already tried to organize a deal between a swap for McKenney to try and get Nanto these that highly sought after. But the claim that they would be, Leeds would, would try very hard to retain Nanto should they be relegated, hoping to bounce back to Premier League immediately, should they get relegated. Um, however, they would consider probably a sale of in around £40 million if they absolutely had to. £36 million is the rumoured fee that Leeds might accept. But Leeds would be looking for in around £40 if they had to sell them. What they have said is that this is not something that Leeds are actively pursuing or actively want to do. What they are saying is that Leeds would resist this because he's on a five-year deal. But if the player himself pushed it through, there would be a fee that they would have to look at trying to accept. And it's between £36 and £40 million. Again, all of this... All of this depends on whether Leeds go down or not. What I'd like to see Willie Nanto sort out in the meantime is his attitude and just this petulant stuff, kicking players off the ball, trying to get yellow cards, pulling shirts, trying to get sent off and, and, and shaking his head and complaining when he's getting taken off in games. He's, eight, he's 19 years of age. He needs to just, you know, accept that he's in the Premier League and you're not going to play every minute of every game and just get on with it and, you know, give your all for the team. Hopefully that fixes things in the next couple of weeks, for next couple of days, sorry, for him before the Liverpool game. A uh, huge player for Leeds, big impact player, but he's got to have the right attitude. Every player needs to have the right attitude at this point. They only push in the same direction to get Leeds out of the mess they're in right now. So fingers crossed on that. Right, folks, long one today. Plenty of news floating around. Thanks for supporting the channel as always. If you want to, you can like and subscribe, all that kind of stuff. Uh, and I'll be back tomorrow with the final news video of the week. I'll see you then. Have a great day. Bye.